hello students uh, uh, welcome to this lecture on uh, the short channel current uh, for the asymmetric gates so what i meant by the short channel current is uh, you know for an asymmetric gate uh, we we were able to estimate uh, the logical efforts uh, using the long channel current model so in this particular lecture we will see uh, how to use uh, you know how to evaluate the logical efforts for an asymmetric gates uh, using the short channel current uh, model so moving on um, so what we have here is uh, you know in the long channel uh, if we have a 4 by 3 uh, w uh, so the two transistor which would be considered as you know this particular two transistor which would be considered as the pull down circuit of the two input nand gate uh, one having a width of 4 by 3, the other one having a width of uh, 4W. Of course, the channel length are same. And its equivalent uh, single transistor was 4 by 3W, comma XL. And then this particular X value, which uh, you know, which we, uh, we can evaluate saying that it is nothing but the summation uh, of the uh, reciprocal of the relative widths of the both the transistors. Right, so if I consider the relative width of the transistor A, it will be nothing but 4 by 3 divided by 4 by 3. And the relative width of the B transistor will be nothing but 4 uh, divided by 4 by 3. Turns out to be 1 and 3. And if I take the, the reciprocal of this, it will be 1 and 1 by 3. And then if I add it up, I'll get this particular X value, which is nothing but 4 by 3. And that's what, uh, you know, uh, the, its equivalent uh, transistor length will be scaled to 4 by 3. So we will have the equivalent transistor, uh, single transistor, uh, representing these two series transistors of different widths as 4 by 3W and 4 by 3L, which is nothing but uh, W comma L. So what it really means is the current that is, uh, uh, you know, the output current of this particular single transistor will be equal to this particular output current of the single transistor, which will be equal to that of the output current of this two series transistors. So that's why we can have a 4 by 3 and 4 here, which will be equivalent to that of the 2 is to 1 inverters and MOS transistor. Right here, uh, you know, there is a 1 here. So that is where uh, the 2 is to 1 inverters and MOS transistor, so 1W, represents uh, the same as adding uh, nothing but uh, uh, the 1W, which will give me the same current as that of the 2 series transistors uh, output current. Right, so and uh, you know we can also do it this way. So if I consider instead of four by three here, if I consider four W, I can find out the X value, which will be nothing but again the same, uh, uh, you know, the same uh, rule of the sum of the reciprocals of the relative width. The only thing that will change is now the relative width of these two transistors will now change with respect to this uh, width, which is now a modified width for the uh, single equivalent transistor. So for so the relative width of this transistor A and then this transistor B will be nothing but 4 by 3 divided by 4W and 4 divided by 4W. So it will be nothing but 1 by 3 and 1. And the summation of the reciprocals of this 1 by 3 and 1 will be nothing but 4. So my uh, equivalent single transistor length will be nothing but 4, which turns out to be W comma L. So again, you know, it's the same thing as we had seen earlier. But just that the width is different now in this particular uh, transistor. In the earlier case, we had taken a different width and that's why we, we obtained uh, you know, a different length. Here we have taken a different width and then that's why we got a uh, length of 4L. So this uh, we were able to calculate. You know, if I want to find out what is the logical efforts of uh, the transistor A or rather the input A and the input B, I know what should be its uh, input capacitance, uh, which is nothing but, uh, you know, the width, whatever the width is given on the NMOS side and then the PMOS side, uh, sum it up and then divide by the 2 is to 1 inverter, right? So divide by the input capacitance seen by the 2 is to 1 inverter. So if I want to find out the logical effort of, uh, you know, A here, it will be nothing but 4 by 3 plus and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm assuming it will be a two input NAND gate. So I will have a two size uh, on the on the PMOS side or the pull up side and then divided by the two is to one inverter will give me three. So this will be my logical effort. Right, which will be, uh, you know, which will be close to uh, 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 10 by nine, which is very, very less than that of four by three. Right, so similarly, if I use a short channel current model, what should be its uh, logical effort? So that's the question we have. 
Proceeding further, uh, so this is, let's try to analyze the short channel current model and then let's say that we have the two transistors. I have marked it as XW comma L and 3XW comma L, right? And then, uh, you know, in our earlier case, actually X was 4 by 3. So we had a one transistor of 4 by 3 here and another transistor as uh, 3 into 4 by 3, which was nothing but 4. So 3X will be nothing but 4. So in the long channel model, whatever earlier we had seen, it is nothing but 4 by 3 here and then uh, uh, 4 W here, 4 by 3 W here and 4 W here. So now I'm taking an X W and then 3 X W. It's equivalent single transistor width will be X W. So we had taken uh, 4 by 3 W and then Y was estimated to be 4 by 3 W. And so Y will be what? So Y will be nothing but we will use the same uh, principles of the sum of the reciprocals of this relative width. So the relative width of the transistor A uh, and the transistor B, so the transistor A will be nothing but XW by XW1 and relative width of B will be 3XW by XW that will be 3. So it will be nothing but the, the sum Y will be nothing but the sum of the reciprocals of the relative widths which will be nothing but 1 by 1 plus uh, 1 by 3 which will be nothing but 4 by 3. So my Y is nothing but 4 by 3 here and XW. What we really need is to identify what is x, whether it is really 4 by 3, uh, whether it is really 4 by 3, that's a question mark, and 3x, whether it will be really 4, that's a question mark, right? So once we identify what is x, I think 3x can be evaluated, right? So if, if I can identify this x value, uh, x w comma 4 by uh, 3l, which is going to give me a current of some current here, and I'm going to write it as uh, equivalent current. This current should be equal to my two is to one, two is to one inverters current. So I'm going to say that this is my uh, two is to one inverters current. So whatever X is that, if the current of XW comma four by three L matches with that of the two is to one inverter, and of course it, it, this particular current will also be the short channel current. So I'm going to write it as short channel, short channel, it will be the short channel current. So whatever is the XW uh, that we are going to design, whatever is the X value, this current should match with that of the two is to one inverter short channel current, right? And that X, you know, whatever it could be, it, it may not be four by three, it may be something else. That will be the X value. And that X value, we'll have to put it here, which is XW and then three XW. Right, so we have two transistors in series with an asymmetric gate size. So the sizes are not same. So the, so the sizes are different here. One is an XW, another one is a 3XW. So if whatever is the X value here, my asymmetric gate size should be of that particular width. It cannot be four by three and it cannot be four. Right, because as per our short channel current model, uh, we need the currents to be same and then the short channel current model may not give us the same current as that we expect in a, in a long channel model. Remember that the long channel model, the W and L for a current, they have a very linear relationship, right? I is the current in a long channel current model is uh, directly proportional. So I'm going to rewrite this is directly proportional to the width and then to the length. Whereas in the short channel, that may not be the case. Right, it is directly proportional to the W, but L parameter right depends on on the on the denominator in terms of the critical voltage, and that is something we will see now. Moving ahead, so what we really want is uh, we should find out X to get the current, same as that of the benchmark inverters current. The benchmark inverters current is uh, at this point of time we have two is to one inverter. Right, so the two is to one inverter. This is the current we have W comma L because this is uh, you know this is my one W which is on the pull down side or pull down side of the two is to one inverter. Right, so this one represents this one W. So this current here, the output current here will be I uh, W L, and of course this should be the short channel current. And uh, you know X W comma four by three L. So this particular current. Uh, will be nothing but x w comma four by three l, and of course I will consider the short channel current. So I'm going to write s c h. 
what we need is these two currents to be the same. So I will have a current equation of uh, of you know the two is to one inverters uh, the uh, the unit NMOS current uh, the unit NMOS short channel current which is written here in this particular denominator point which is nothing but WC oxide velocity saturation VGS minus VT the whole square divided by VGS minus VT plus VC. And I will write the current of uh, this particular transistor, which is XW comma 4 by 3 L uh, in the short channel, which is nothing but XWC oxide velocity saturation VGS minus VT the whole square divided by VGS minus VT plus uh, the, you know, the, the critical uh, voltage VC multiplied by 4 by 3 because the length is 4 by 3. And then this particular VC, uh, this particular VC is for the unit, uh, you know, this is for uh, the channel length of L, right? So what we had said was this VC is nothing but uh, 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 length multiplied by the EC. Right, so if the length is scaled by 4 by 3 times, then uh, it should have 4 by 3 length multiplied by EC. So that is where this 4 by 3 is coming into the picture. All right, so hope these two uh, you know equations are clear. And what we really need is this current and this current should be same. So XW comma 4 by 3 L, whatever the current, uh, the, the falling current is there, that should match with that of the falling current of W comma L, which is our benchmark inverters uh, current. And that is when, if we do that, then we should be able to find out what is the real x value. And so what I've done is I've taken the ratio here and that should be equated to one. Uh, in terms of the ratio, WC oxide, velocity, saturation, VGS minus VT square, everything will get cancelled. Uh, what will be remaining is this XW because this XW uh, is coming from here. This particular current equation uh, has this x value here. So this x will be remaining. And uh, we have this uh, denominator VGS minus VT plus VC uh, multiplied by 4 by 3 that will remain. And on the denominator side, uh, everything gets cancelled and then only thing remaining is VGS minus VT plus VC. So this will go up, this particular uh, whole term uh, will go to the numerator side multiplied by X divided by VGS minus VT plus VC into 4 by 3. So this is what we have x uh, multiplied by VGT. So what I've done is uh, the, uh, uh, made the term shorter. So VGS minus VT, which is actually nothing but uh, you know one volt minus VT. Uh, we can consider that as nothing but 0.7 volts. So that I've considered it as VGT. Okay. So VGT is nothing but VGS minus VT plus VC uh, divided by VGT plus 4 by 3 VC is equal to 1. So I should be able to find out the X value. X value turns out to be 1.199. So my A transistor, actually the A transistor width should be 1.199 W and B transistor width should be 3.59 W so that I will get the current same as that of the one W comma L. So whatever the current, the benchmark inverters, two is to one inverter, um, uh, the falling current is there. That current I will get only if I have 1.199 W and then uh, 3.59 uh, W on the two transistors which are in series. And especially if you are considering a two input NAND gate, I need to have, and if I want to introduce asymmetricity uh, in the gate widths, then I need to have 1.199 W in one transistor and another transistor should have 3.59 W. And this current uh, you know, will be same as the current which the benchmark inverter is given. All right, so this is, I'll call it as NI current. So note that for the short channel current model, width and length relation is not as linear as that of uh, the long channel current because of the term, uh, you know, there is a, so X, this represents the width. So the current in the short channel is directly proportional to the uh, to the scaling factor of the width, but on the length side, there are some parameters, and uh, it it may not be, you know, uh, it may not be inversely proportional. It may not be a linear relationship between x and then the four by three. The four by three gets accommodated in the denominator with some kind of a, uh, a kind of an expression, and that's the reason why we don't have that kind of uh, that kind of a linear relationship. All right, so what I eventually see is in the long channel current model, if I use a long channel current model, uh, 
then I can easily scale it. So I, I can have a four by three here. I can have a four by three multiplied by three, which would be four. And uh, I know whatever current I achieve here, it will be nothing but four by three W and then four by three L. So my width and then the currents, or rather width and the channel length have a very linear relationship. In the short channel, I don't have that. So this, if I consider a four by three L, then the width will be 1.99 and it will not be 1.33, which is 4.4 by 3. Right, so there is a slight drop in the width compared to the long channel current model, which, you know, which used to give us 4 by 3 W. Here it is 1.199. So if I consider a two input NAND gate here, so this is a two input NAND gate. The PMOS transistor is 2W, PMOS is 2W, NMOS is 1.199W and uh, the another transistor is 3.59W. So if I, if I want to find out the logical effort of the input A, it will be nothing but 1.99 plus 2W divided by 3, so 1.199 plus 2 divided by 3, which will be 1.066, which will be, you know, uh, uh, which will be less than that of uh, uh, 4 by 3, this is anyways less than 4 by 3. And uh, the GB is nothing but uh, 3.59 plus 2 divided by 3, which will be 1.863. In the long channel, if I see the same parameters in the long channel, it will be 10 by 9, uh, 4 by 3 plus 2 divided by 3. And then uh, for the input B, the logical effort turned out to be 4 plus 2 divided by 3, which will be nothing but 2. So if I consider this comparison, the short channel current model is actually giving me the logical effort less. And uh, you know, if I consider 10 by 9 and then 1.066, this also value is slightly less. So the short channel model is likely to give me uh, the logical effort, which is less. And short channel current model, we always say that it is more closer to the uh, to the accurate results. So eventually, this short channel model is going to give me you know whatever the parameters uh, which we are characterizing the logical efforts or the parasitics it will give me a value very, very close to the accurate value. So the delay uh, evaluation will also be very, very close. Whereas the long channel is always a conservative approach. You know, we'll always have a values which is slightly higher. So even, even here, we are seeing the logical efforts to be slightly higher. So eventually our delay calculation using the long channel will always be slightly conservative. Uh, thank you.